Hi, I'm Jeff Cogswell, and today we're going to talk about how to get the compiler to generate a vectorized code, and we're going to take a look at the assembler code and make sure that it really is vectorized. So I've got here some C++ code. Uh, basically, I'm creating three arrays. Uh, each is holding a float, and each one holds 128 floats. And then I'm initializing these arrays. Um, I'm just putting some random numbers basically in these. I mean, they're not random, but I'm just, just test data inside each of them. Uh, A is going to hold I over 10, and B is going to hold I over 20. And I'm initializing C to 0. Now, technically, I don't really need to initialize C to 0. The compiler does automatically put zeros in it for us, and Intel has verified that for us. However, it's it's just good programming practice, just in case we ever decide to port this to other compilers where where that might not be a guarantee. And then I'm going to loop through these, and here's where my vectorization is taking place. I'm doing and just a simple addition here. Now, we have, of course, many different operations we can do, but for now we're just going to look at the addition just because it's, it's a little bit easier. And then finally, I'm just going to print out what I've got. So let's go over here to the compiler. Now, I'm, instead of using Visual Studio right now, I'm using the Intel um, command line compiler. So I need to go over to the Intel directory. And it's in the composer and in the bin. And in here, it are some uh, scripts that will set up the compiler variables for us. The one we want is the ICL vars.bat. I'm just going to paste that in and run it, and it will give you the command line options. And it's going to tell us the one we want is Intel 64. Uh, that's going to uh, set up Intel 64 for both host and target. So we put Intel 64 here. And now we're set up to use the compiler. Let's go back to my tests here. Okay, now I've got the code here. Um, I'm going to go ahead and delete the object file and executable since I had already tested this earlier. Now, the I ICL is the command line, and we, we can just do test1.cpp. Um, It'll compile it, but it won't really give us any information about what happened. So let's turn on the vectorization report. Now, it's doing auto vectorization, but we don't know that. So if we do qvec report 2, then it'll report back to us the vectorization. Now, there's a whole bunch because it's also digging down into the include files and telling us that those aren't vectorized. Let's scroll up. And right there, we see loop was vectorized, loop was vectorized. That happened on line 11 and line 17. So let's go over and look at those. Uh, let's turn on line numbers here. Line 11 is this loop, where I'm in initializing it. And line 17 is where I'm doing my actual work. So it actually vectorized when I was uh, just initializing the arrays, and that's, that's good too. Our main focus here is in this one right here. Uh, now let's go ahead and look at the assembler output. Oh, um, before we do this, I, I, I want to also, um, by default, it doesn't generate uh, AVX code. It's for an earlier SIMD. So let's add in another option here. Let's do QX, and for AVX we do core-AVX-I. Let's run it again. And now we should have AVX code. But we want to actually look at it. And for that, we're going to need a compiler option. So let's look at that for a second. To see the assembly code, we add the slash s option. So let's go ahead and add that. And now we've got a .asm file. Let's open that up. Okay, so here's the code, and it's actually line 18, because that's where the vectorized uh, line was. And the V here means we've targeted the AVX processor, and uh, the first operation is a move, 
and the P here means packed, and that's the key here. If it were not vectorized, it would be a scalar operation, and, and then we'd, we would actually see an S here. And so what we've got is we're moving a packed uh, single precision numbers into the, in, into the register, and then we're doing an add packed, again, single precision, and then we're moving them back out. And that's really all it is. And we know it's, it, we targeted the right processor based on the assembly that we see here. So let's close this up. And then when we turn off that slash s, and let's turn this back down to number one here instead of two, which will give us a shorter report. And we run it. And now we know for sure our loop was vectorized and that the code we got was indeed for AVX. And that's all it takes.